What if you could become Mario, or Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, or Flappy Bird? Now you can play any game by being in the game. My last project let you type anything using your body, and it was widely hailed as a success. I guess? I tried using it to play games, but it's not designed for holding down keys or button mashing, so even simple games were pretty terrible. So I tried using the same idea to make a full body game controller. I even ended up making some custom games of my own that adjust the difficulty based on your actual heart rate. But first, we need to build a more flexible system. My plan was to build a neural network that could recognize custom movement from any individual, scale that up to multiple players, make it configurable for any game, and then see if I could actually improve my terrible gaming skills using the body controller. All the cool kids are doing, and it can't be that hard to write my own neural net, right? Why is this so difficult? I finally got something to record and recognize custom gestures, but it was just way too slow. Maybe this approach could work on a beefy GPU with lots of training data, but I wanted to run it on a laptop without having to spend hours doing the same movements repeatedly. So I kept most of the predefined gestures from the original code. Instead of a complex prediction model, it's just doing relative math on the angles and distances of key points. I did have to come up with some modifications to the setup. Originally, I'd used closed and open hands for different sets of symbols, but once you back up enough to fit at least two people in the frame, there weren't enough pixels left, so at first I made some other variations that could stand out a bit more. I even got body inversion working as a modifier. As an added bonus, the keyboard now has more international support. But it turns out these movements take up a lot of space and time, so I mostly stuck to arms and legs. I've been traveling around a lot lately, hence the vlogger setup. I don't have my usual basement studio. But it turns out that airports are the perfect testing ground for this project. There's lots of well-lit open room, and nobody pays any attention to a random guy acting suspicious. Once I got things configurable to hold versus press and release certain keys, I was finally able to play some simple games in single player mode and stand a chance. But as fun as it was to get dressed up alone in my basement and hop around, I wanted to rope as many friends as possible into this madness. I spent days adding a separate layer that can detect bodies for multiplayer and track each individual over time. This machine learning approach was once again way over-engineered. It worked, but to use it reliably you have to run detection on every single frame of video which slows down the processing way too much. Instead, I just divide the frame into however many sections are needed with separating lines to show players where they need to stand. If you don't actually want to punch each other, you'll have to stand apart anyway, so it works fine for this use case. It's a pretty good setup for two players. Three is doable, but after that we started running out of pixels, RAM, and physical space all at once. Solo games that rely on timing and quick move combos were a struggle to play, but this is kind of a fun feature for multiplayer games where you're both at the same disadvantage. Nice. It's amazing how much we take for granted how quickly and precisely our fingers can fly around on multiple buttons. Doing anything close to the movements we see in games shows us how much we can't actually move that way in real life. Any of the recognized movements can be mapped to any key or even to any set of keys. This setup works for nearly any game you can play using only a keyboard. My code includes some examples for these games, and you could easily add your own. Theoretically, you could even play Dark Souls, although it might be a while before you get anywhere. Okay. Simple games are the best to set up, but that doesn't mean they're easy. Oh, oh, oh. Flappy Bird is a tough shoulder workout. Oh. It's the most fun and intuitive to use when you match game movements to body motions. Without any prior instruction, my friends were flying around in Star Fox, punching each other in Mortal Kombat, and making as much progress in Quop as I've ever managed. Some games, like Simon, were much more straightforward to play with a physical layout. It's also great for getting a workout. I mapped the accelerator in Mario Kart to leg lifts, and while it took me twice as long as usual to finish the course, it was much more satisfying than just twiddling my fingers. <laughs> It's difficult to find games that work really well with the body controller, so I built some of my own custom games to take advantage of the unique setup. First, I made a simple pose matching game. It shows the player's random pictures, and they have to match each pose to get points. Then I hooked it up to a heart rate monitor, so if the game is going too easy on you, it keeps speeding up until your heart rate is fast enough. Marco, who reached out after my last project, has made all sorts of fun games for his kids to play while getting a workout. Inspired by his balloon popping game, I made another game I call Cuteness Overload. Puppies and kittens appear randomly on the screen, and you have to pet them all. Of course I hooked that up to the heart rate monitor too. As it senses your heart rate going down, it increases the rate of appearances until your screen is pretty much overrun. It's probably the cutest way to have a heart attack. And speaking of heart attacks, like every aspiring mad scientist, I recently bought a TENS unit. 
It's supposed to be relaxing electrotherapy, but it also doubles as a low-grade taser. I spent half the effort on this project just trying to get Bluetooth data from my heart rate monitor, but now that I have it, I want to connect my heart rate to the TENS as extra motivation to get up and move. Subscribe if you want to see the results of that experiment, or come say hi at OpenSauce, where I'll be sharing some of these projects to try out live. They're having none of it. <laughs>